So, this is the follow-up to my previous HTS video, the one where I spent a month fixing, testing and waiting for parts. Today I'll finally close that story and at the same time compare the HTD and the HTS side by side after all the drama. You'll probably notice the background looks very different from the last video. That is because I have moved to a new place and my workshop is now split in two. Part of it is here at home on the balcony and the rest is in the warehouse. That is also why this video took a bit longer to come out. But I'll try to use this as an opportunity. I plan to reorganize everything and show how I set up my new workspace, which should produce a few interesting videos. If you watched the last video, you remember the whole saga. MS not loading the filament, buffer swap, motor swap, endless support messages and finally the ED sensor. After the new sensor arrived and was installed, the printer finally came back to life. The AMS now loads normally, extrusion is consistent and it has been running without any new ears. So in the end, the real problem was mix between a bad buffer and a faulty AD sensor and there is a big chance that I actually broke the AD sensor by myself. Since then, the HTS has already chewed through about a 5 full spools of material. And simple prints are fast and consistent, and after a few test runs I trusted it enough to leave it printing overnight. From time to time I printed the same models on the HDD just to compare the surface finish, and honestly they look identical. So it is safe to say that the printer is fixed. At this point I decided to go farther. I started with some simple prints, basic shapes without any supports, overhangs or complex parts just to check that printer actually provides consistent results. And also I compared them with HDD and the quality looks identical. I mean surface finish, layer lines, everything just okay. Then I printed a few square calibration parts to check dimensional accuracy. They came out pretty good both linear and diagonal measurements were the same and within 0.05 mm tolerances for both printers, that means their portals, belts and mechanical parts are correct from the factory. Next, I move to something more interesting. These spinners are print-in-place parts. The thing is that if tolerances aren't correct, they will stick together and won't spin and all three of these are spinning pretty good, that means that 3D printers are providing pretty good tolerances and well calibrated out of the factory, as well as their print profiles for bamboo lab filaments. After that, I printed a bigger model with supports. This Fox. It is stuck between two worlds, dead at the top, alive at the bottom. It had a lot of supports and they were removed pretty easily and uh, surface finish is quite good. This is the first print where I actually trusted HTS with something more complex and um, long in terms of print hours. So it handled pretty good and this thing earns its keep at our home. Looks pretty good. By the way, we recently passed 700 subscribers on the channel. And thank you so much for your support. And if you enjoy what I do, enjoy these videos, don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons. Thank you. Then I decided to give both printers something a little tougher, a multicolor Hulk print. I went with Red Hulk for the HTS and with Green Regular Hulk for the HTD. On the HTD we had four colors and I also used this model as overhang benchmark because it has a lot of supports and overhangs and they both handled it flawlessly. The HTD finished in about 10 hours and HTS finished in 17 hours, so that's a major difference. Supports were easy to remove in both cases and the HTS Red Hulk actually looks slightly better around the elbow area, both in overhangs and support removal. Other parts of the model were exactly the same and then there is the waist. Here is what the HTD spat out during the print and this is what the HTS threw away. So yes, quite a gap there. After seeing that, I probably would not recommend the HTS for color prints. It is great for single material functional parts, but for multicolor work the HTD clearly handles it more efficiently. 
And finally, as the final boss, I picked the Tortured Toaster model. This one is not an easy print. Both printers actually knocked over the Tolerance Towers mid-print. At first, I thought it was some bad adhesion issue, so I cleaned up the surface with isopropyl alcohol and no luck. Same results. Then I started tweaking temperatures and print settings. Still no improvement. And then I checked the G-code itself. I checked seams on the model and realized they were building up and creating small ridges. I did not see the exact moment when the nozzle hit the tower, but it is safe to assume that the seam buildup raised the surface just enough for the nozzle to clip it during the overhangs printing. So I manually repositioned the seam and got a perfect print on the HTD. At that point I thought, okay, the machines are almost identical, what could go wrong? I'll just print another torture toaster. Well, they're not identical. The HTS kept knocking the towers even with the corrected G-code. I tried increasing the bed temperature, adjusting cooling and changing the flow rate. Still, no luck. The solution was surprisingly simple. A glue stick. I added a bit of glue on the bed, kept the stock settings and corrected G-code and this time, finally, it was a success. So in my case, I could get the same print quality from HTS compared to HTD only after adding that glue layer. It probably helped absorb the nozzle impact during overhands printing and preventing the tolerance towers from being knocked over. Now let us take a look at the actual results. We have two test prints here, gold one for HTD and blue one for the H2S. These 3D prints have two sides. This one is tolerance towers. As you can see, 0.2 mm, 0.3, 0.4 and 0.5 mm are all moving for the HTD, which is pretty good. Now it's turn for the H2S and let's open up the tolerances tower and see how they behave. So 0.5 is moving, 0.4 is moving, 0.3 is tied but still moving, 0.2 doesn't move, 0.2, 0.1 don't move at all. That means that H2D prints better than H2S. I started to look for the reason and reprinted part one more time. Then I noticed something. The cooling settings for PLA are different for the HTS and HDD. HTS actually spins its cooling fan faster by default. So it is safe to say that the HTS has slightly worse cooling efficiency. And even Bamboo Lab's own profiles compensate for that. I'm not 100% sure, but I think this is why HTS didn't pass 0.2 mm tolerance test. Now let's compare overhangs. We have HTD on the left and H2S on the right. So first is this semi-transparent PLA. As you can see, overhangs on 80 degrees are looking very, very similar. And the same thing is actually the, the white PLA. To be honest, I still do not see any difference in overhangs. Maybe that is 100% cooling setting in the PLA profile. Mm, maybe it was an actual update or fix for the HTS. And that is why overhangs look identical for both machines. I'm actually not sure. I did not have enough print time in the first video to confirm that the HTS has worse cooling. But this time I'm pretty sure about it. Even though overhangs look identical, 80% on HTD and 100% of cooling on H2S look pretty suspicious. Now, let us talk about reliability. My HTD has been running almost non-stop and it is honestly an impressive machine. I just trust it. After the repair, H2S is now catching up really fast. If we exclude the torture tests, it feels pretty good. It has been running solid for days without any new problems. Interestingly, Bamboo Lab's support team has been very active lately. I actually got an email this morning where they said that it would be nice if I shared my follow-up experience on YouTube, which probably means they watched the previous video. 
Good news, they are clearly paying attention to what the community is saying. And bad news, I probably cannot go undercover for support tickets anymore. Unless I create a new account and buy another printer, which I'm not planning to do yet. So, what do I think about the Bamboo Labs H2S after two months of usage? I think we need to look at it from a budget perspective on top of its performance. What is important for such a machine is reliability, and I cannot ignore that after the repair, the machine was solid. Many people in the comment section said the same. Someone even mentioned that they have 10 of them running with no issues. So, I think I just got unlucky here and got a faulty unit in the first place. Yes, it has worse cooling, but it is not a deal breaker. It is worse than H2D, but H2D is much more expensive machine. But when you compare it to competitors, things flip back in Bamboo's favor. Prusa is much more expensive, K2 Plus has mechanical issues, and I don't know much about Kidi, Chidi. I have not owned one of their printers before, and according to what I see on YouTube, they are no different. So when you look at the HTS from both performance and the budget perspectives, it starts to make sense. If I did not already have the HD, I would purchase HTS for my workshop. I still disagree with some of Bamboo Lab's marketing strategies, and I wish their support was a bit more proactive. But after that first video, I received a lot of messages from people sharing their own experiences with different brands, and most of those stories were not any better than mine. What I cannot deny is that Bamboo's machines are still ahead of the competition, both in performance and consistency, once they are up and running. Overall, HTS is a workhorse. It's solid, it's predictable, you can trust it, you can trust it with overnight prints. What do you think about this 3D printer? Let me know in the comments down below. And thanks for watching all the way to the end. See you in the next one.